How do you explain stuff like that? I don't know how to explain stuff like that. <laughs> I'm Look, I'm just a poor old bricklayer. I don't know. Uh, I'm not a theologian or any goddamn thing. I don't know how to explain that. How you doing? <laughs> My name is Harry Clark, Belfast, Ireland. I'm very proud of it. Moved to America March the 30th, 1973. Because uh, at that time, there was things going on in Belfast called the Troubles. And I had two young boys then, and uh, I thought it was time to get out of there and see for a while, I thought for a couple of years or a year or two, then everything would be fine, and then we could probably move back again. And then the Troubles just went on forever, and then we just kind of went on forever and just stayed on, and that was about it. The Troubles are a, a conflict that's been going on in Ireland for probably three, four hundred years since the English invaded Ireland. And it's been going on and on. And then in the 1920s, there was a, like a referendum in Ireland. And the referendum it, it set up a, a six county state and a 26 county state, which was called the Free State. And I happened to live in the six counties, which is now called Northern Ireland and it was controlled by the Protestants. And I was of the minority Catholic people. And then, as time went on, over the years from the 20s until 1969, which was the start of the Troubles, there was always conflict because the Catholic people were treated like you would imagine the blacks were treated in the South, in the south here. There was a lot of discrimination and so on and so forth. And then in 1969, there was protests, and they wanted to uh, get to be as equal as their Protestant brothers, which their Protestant brothers didn't want them, of course, so then the trouble started. Still, I mean, I went back a couple of times. Since it, you know, I mean, during the troubles, I went back, I went back to 77 with that. 76 with my wife and the oldest daughter. And it was very, very, I mean, just, you could, it got to me, it, it near made me sick. You know, the nerves, you were, you were afraid to go anywhere, especially at, at night, you know. And I was stopped a couple of times by the British Army. Uh, Marie and I, we were coming home one night and the British soldiers pulled us over. They kind of knew me and knew who I was and pulled us over and started fooling with my wife. And then I turned around and then they hit me with the butt of the rifle. And one of them put their, their, their gun right to my head and said to their, their sergeant who was standing to the side, shall I shoot the bastard now? And the sergeant says, no, just leave everything alone, let's go. And they just left us alone and went on, and then we were left to walk home. Actually, what they want you to do is talk back to them. So if somebody's watching, somebody might in the district might think you're an informer. And that's the way that's the way they operated. Always did. Well, where I grew up in, in, in North Belfast, that's how they were treated, and uh, that's. It was like everything else, uh, violence just breeds more violence, so and that's been shown all over the world anyway. I think everybody should know their history, no matter what it is, if, even if it's English or if it's Scottish or Irish, but it's also important and uh, not to really care, but keep it with you and then still move on and work the way you would work in America. But you should never lose where you came from, never. As much as I could go home to, to, to try and keep that in them, to keep their, the, to always to remember that they were Irish first and then American. Well, the community in Ireland is more, they're more family oriented than, than uh, they are here. They just uh, kind of move on from that. But when you're in Ireland, everybody is important to you. Even your second cousins or your third cousins, no matter who they are, they're all family. 
and they're always very important to you. Yeah, he started off as a small uh, masonry contractor, and then over the years, he just kept getting bigger and bigger and better jobs. And then finally, he did go to work for uh, the company I was working for doing our masonry. But they used to keep me and him on separate jobs so uh, we wouldn't get together. Unfortunately, when we done it, you had to start from the bottom, which crucified your back because you're bent over for till you get three or four feet off the wall up and then it gets a little easier. But to get the three or four feet, you have to bend the way down and you're lifting mortar and you're lifting bricks and then you're bending down and it's just... It's actually a work of art. It's like a painting or something too, when it's done right. The whole overall gist of it is, is there's certain people can do it as good, and there's certain people can do it really good, and then there's people like me that's brilliant. So that's the way it happens. My goal when I first came to America was to be a millionaire, to get and work hard, get a big house, and and try to get everything I, I wanted to get. And well, Harry would have been on his own after that, and I said, well, he'll eat, eat. As I say, he doesn't like working with anybody. Well, I could always work with others, if it was the others couldn't work with me. <laughs> that was the thing. You know, they, they found it just hard to work with me. I always found it easy enough to work with others. He was a, a truthful and honest person. You know, if somebody says, oh, I think, don't you think that would look nice? Harriet sit there and go, no, I think it'll look like shit. I wouldn't have it in my house. Why do you want to put it in yours? I mean, he was very honest, and he, and he always did a very good job. My work ethic is very good. I always love my work. I always look forward to going to work, which is, I think is a blessing to anybody. Because if you get up in the morning and you don't look forward to going to where you want to go to, then it isn't. It's not even worth. And there's a lot of people do that. I always look forward, couldn't wait to get to work, love work. My work ethic would be the way I would take my Irish identity. Because to me, when I was in Ireland, everybody were, always worked hard and never slacked around. No matter what they worked at, they always worked hard. And I always tried to carry that with me. Well, he got that from his father. The hard working stuff, you know what I mean? He got that from his father, that's for sure. That's right, you know, his mother, he probably gave him his brain, what little he has. But we agree on certain things, and most of all, we agree on uh, sitting around, having a few drinks, and swapping stories. You know, none of them are that ever true or anything, but the thing he doesn't like about me is I remember all the old stories of him when he first got here, and he just as soon forget them. Well, I, I think it's more of a, a community thing, and, and uh, as, as we would say in Ireland, uh, 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 for, for the crack, you know, you, the crack being is uh, being able to communicate and get along and just talk a load of shit to people, you know what I mean, and get and do it right. And that's what, actually that's all about.